Gusto. Ang tunubiyah pagka hamto ka chamra ka na tepti sa mga ka ay monong pula bisika junto krom damlang sa brenya ang chamra ka chom dang pi ka para para pibili rubing sa damlang sa brenya jamoy ng krom sa mga pino muk damlang dam dang rap rap ni nung ka da mahay ka sa nung para para pibili yung may jay Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. But to me, um, sir, look at him. Look, look, sir, the prosecution would be requesting another 45 minutes if possible. Um, the next session will finish with the documents in relation to uh, the targeting of the Vietnamese. Uh, and then we would like to, if we were able, to present 45 minutes on Lon, not the targeting of Lon Nol, uh, soldiers and officials. And what we would ask, if that was possible, that uh, the civil parties would continue from uh, three to four, and then uh, we would present 45 minutes um, tomorrow. Um, if not, uh, what we made do was put forward the references uh, in, a, in a Rule 92 submission, but preferably we would like to present uh, some of those documents for 45 minutes tomorrow. Thank you. 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 Yang mana kerum tak menjadi nombor kemenang dan menang rakyat ini? Hasil kerum lopetin lulus dari cai kerum doa yang percaya bahawa kan sehat peria perianya, kerang menjadi nombor terkali ya perlu mahu doa ini kerjapi mahu bayi lopet dalam mahu buan lopetin. Ba, akun, orang jemne, anjat, som cuy. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Honours, so, uh, uh, we left off at the 26th of April 1977. I'd now like to move to the 15th of June 1977. And it's a document E324, it's a telegram from the North East Side, uh, from the North East Side Secretary to the Party Centre. Uh, and if I can quote at EN English ERN 00897 667 667 and French 00282550 and if I can just briefly read the report, um, the North East Zone Secretary states that at 9am on the 14th of June, the production unit 801, stationed at 107, was patrolling arrested 209 Vietnamese soldiers, including 9 females in the vicinity of Bola, 4 kilometres south of road number 9. Almost all of them are of Jirai ethnicity who speak Khmer with an ethnic accent and they have already been kept in our custody. They go on to, the report goes on to state that based on our examination, uh, they are enemies from outside who had intended to come to burrow in our territory but failed and were forced to change their whereabouts. Unquote. Your Honours, the North East Zone Secretary uh, did not uh, believe them and at the end of the document, they said Ankar's comments are requested. And this document was copied to Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia and others and, and to the Office uh, of Documentation. Your Honours, on, on the case file, um, there is evidence and, and witnesses will be coming shortly. Um, and certainly in paragraph 804 of the indictment, it states that these um, Vietnamese troops were executed.
the relevance of that document, Your Honours, is that um, there was a, a policy uh, in place um, to kill um, combatants or civilians uh, of Vietnamese, um, Vietnamese race. The next document, Your Honour, I would like to refer to is a tram record. It's of the 4th of August, 1977. It's E3-4112. And it's, it's a report from the district, uh, the chief of uh, Kabal Pau village, uh, reporting on a, a certain person named Hak. H-I-E-K. And in short, the report says um, that he was lazy and it goes on to explain how lazy he was and he was, he was sick and hadn't eaten well. But it goes on to say that this to confirm that this name Hak is a half-breed Vietnamese. And this is at 0032214 in the English. Your Honour submitted that this report identifying that Huck was a uh, half-breed Vietnamese is evidence of targeting of uh, Vietnamese um, civilians in the Tram Croc district. If I can move to the 6th of September 77, the same E3 number, slash 2447, at English 0035. 5474 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, this person is a Yuan. And then, uh, it's, it's further um, stated in the report that um, Comrade Kit on the 6th of September 1977 uh, stated request that a thorough interrogation be conducted because this person is an organised string of the CIA. We would submit again, Your Honours, that um, this is evidence of a policy to target um, uh, Vietnamese civilians in the Tramcock uh, district. And further, uh, E3 slash 2050, and this is now on the 17th of September 1977, in Trancock, and I refer to English 0075 and French 0085 this report um, is dated on the 17th of September 1977. It's been sent to Ankar in the district, and it relates to the arrest of three women. Um, and it talks about um, the women having conflicts because they refused to do their labour work, and, and they, they wouldn't basically do enough work. But when it lists the, um, the three women, the first woman, Mian Pao, is list listed as ethnic Yuan, wife of the district chief. Anka has already smashed the husband. And the prosecution is submitting, Your Honours, that this uh, indicates that, uh, again, that uh, Vietnamese civilians are being targeted and arrested uh, because, of their, because of their race. I'd like, now like to turn to the 1st of January uh, 1978 
ใครมวยมากระจัดตุ่มตุ่มใบคือไอ้ก็จะเออใบเลือกปีเลยสายสปุ่มใบอังเลมเลยโซนโซนสามสปีสายสปุ่มใบโซนปุ่มบุญขมายมันได้โซนโซนโซนปีมวยโซนปราบบุญนั่งบารังมันได้โซนโซนปุ่มมวยใบดับบุญสายสปุ่มมวยนี่ คือเจอมาบอกว่าสาวสรุนที่ออฟฟิศเอ่อไอซ์เซเว่นและเขาบอกว่าเขาบอกว่าเขาบอกว่าเขาบอกว่าเขาบอกว่าเขาบอกว่
Hay que saber que pon en como la traza de 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 la And he sends this report to Comrade And he refers to this person called Nam. And basically, the report explains that he was complaining about carrying on with the revolution. And the fourth paragraph states this contemptible Nam is a pure Yuan. And he's asking. Uh, his brother to acknowledge uh, the information that's the person that wrote the report. Again, Your Honours, we would say that this is further evidence uh, that uh, civilians were targeted because uh, they were a view of, of Vietnamese race. But now I'd like to turn to the 29th of January, 1978, and ERN number 00088-5894 and Khmer 00022-4832 and French 00292683 And Your Honours, this is a Phibis um, report. Um, it's a BBC media report from the Phnom Penh Home Service Radio. It's dated the 29th of January. And this is a report related to a broadcast confession obtained from a captured Vietnamese soldier. And the confession basically explains what the um, The goals of um, the Vietnamese, um, the Vietnamese army were, and we submit that this um, this document assists in showing that um, captured Vietnamese um, military, um, tortured confessions were used as propaganda to be publicized on the radio uh, in order to incite the population um, to direct uh, their actions towards um, um, destruction of the Vietnamese or the combatants or civilians. Your Honours, there were many of these um, broadcasted confessions um, on the Phnom Penh radio. And if we look at um, E3 slash 9423, this, Your Honours, is a prisoner list It's called Annex 27, the Vietnamese prisoners entering S21. And it's a list of 345 prisoners that were recorded on the master S21 prisoner list, E3 slash 342. And this list was extracted from the larger list to show, at least from the records, how many Vietnamese prisoners were taken to S21. Of those 345, 19 on this list, 345 S21, had their confessions broadcasted on Phnom Penh radio. Uh, I won't give you the numbers now, we'll file them with the court. But it goes to show that uh, Vietnamese prisoners who were questioned uh, under, under torture uh, were used as propaganda to uh, incite uh, the Cambodian um, population and forces um, against um, the Vietnamese. You'll see from that list, Your Honours, that um, the prisoners range from, being arri from arriving at S21 from as early as 1976, and many from 1976, and the vast majority of them are not listed as um, regular Vietnamese soldiers, but they're listed as spies, and they're listed as spies from different parts of um, Cambodia, particularly on the, um, uh, the eastern 
border. And so uh, we would submit that this document um, assists in proving that Vietnamese combatants and non-combatants were uh, arrested and taken to S21 and executed uh, without being given at the very minimum the protections um, under, the, uh, under the Geneva Conventions. I would now move to the 14th of February 1978. It's E3-9375. And this um, describes the it's a military telegram. It's copied to Nguyen Chia and it describes the deployment of Vietnamese forces and it also reports on the arrest of two Vietnamese and their transfer to S21 and Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia copied to that. And that's at English uh, 0118 and Khmer Zero zero two oh nine four nine and French zero zero two nine five three and we submit this assists in proving the policy of killing Vietnamese combatants or civilians. Now move to January, February 1978, This is a revolutionary youth magazine. And in brief, it talks about the enemy situation, but particularly at English. 0006 expansionist, territory swallowing UN enemy and their clique. And we would submit the terms used every type of external enemy and the UN enemy and their clique um, is a direction uh, to uh, the troops to, to kill uh, directions of troops to kill uh, not only Vietnamese combatants, but Vietnamese civilians. I would now turn to the 1st of April 1978, and it's E3-928. And it's a report from the Division 164 Commander, Mir Smut, on the 1st of April 1978. It's copied to Pol Pot, Yang Sari, and the documentation. And at English 0018-3357, and French 0061-6. Six six eight it states that on the 1st of April 1978, in sum, the number of UN have been captured and shot to death from the 27th of March 1978 through 30th of March 1978 is 120. And we would submit again this is evidence of uh, the intention CPK, uh, leadership, um, to uh, kill um, combatants and non-combatants, Vietnamese combatants and non-combatants, as they were captured and then shot And then, Your Honours, I would like to turn to the 15th of April 1978. This is E3-562. And it's a statement from Q Sampan. It's um, a report from the uh, Phnom Penh Home Service. It's headed Phnom Penh Rally marks the 17th of April anniversary. This is the uh, third anniversary of the uh, Democratic Party And Kusan Pan states gives this speech uh, at a meeting of 20,000 people. 
and it Originally, did the UN ever fight us and win? The UN had wanted to make Cambodia their subjects since 1930. In 1970, could they take Cambodia? Could they not take it? In 1975, were they able to take Cambodia? They could not. And now, how about the UN? There are no UN in Cambodia territory. Formerly, there were nearly one million of them. Now there is not one seed of them to be found. So then our view is, do not give up in advance. Look at the history. Can the UN swallow up Cambodia or not? They cannot. The relevance of that passage, Your Honours, we would submit, is that certainly by April 1978, say, um, admission by Pol Pot, that there were no Vietnamese left in Cambodia. In this speech, Pol Pot goes on to address at English ហើយនេះគឺជាខ្ញុំសាងលេខនេះសូមប្រាំមួយ individually killing 30 Vietnamese each. And I quote, the party has determined 
to keep on attacking them until they accept the sea border and the air border too. We must keep on fighting one against 30 for them to recognise this, recognise it on paper and recognise it on the world stage that they dare not approach our borders again. And then, Your Honours, uh, the speech goes on to talk about how there were 50 million uh, residents in Vietnam and only 8 million uh, in Cambodia. And how is it that Cambodia's troops could overtake um, um, I won't read that discussion out, Your Honours, but I would ask you to look at it. And if you can, the, the prosecution's position is that the, the numbers of the population um, viewed to be possible members of a fighting force um, are considered to be. Um, Civilians, uh, certainly from the point of view of Pol Pot. Uh, we would we would submit this is relevant in showing that uh, this type of speech uh, created um, a climate um, of hate against the Vietnamese uh, amongst um, the uh, Cambodian uh, troops and also uh, civilian authorities and helped provide an atmosphere in which um, uh, non-combatant uh, Vietnamese were killed as well as combatants Vietnamese not been given protection at English 0018-46-07 and Khmer 0077-7894, it appears at this stage no uh, French is available. That on the 6th of January 1978, um, Chan writes, we went and beat the UN thoroughly, the targets of the UN attack with the front of the 3rd Division of the East more than 150 regiments. That, we say, was a victory over the UN, the attack inside UN territory, and achieved the principle of 1 to 30. Again, this is a demonstration that uh, what is said uh, by the senior leaders of the CPK is um, absolutely taken note of and put into practice. Uh, and then it further it uh, English 0018-4616 and Khmer 0007-7952 and there's no French available at this stage. It states that on the 25th of July 1978, the instructions are to find the UN. We find them scattered everywhere. We know they are hidden UN, uh, in the east, in the northwest, in Phnom Penh, which we have not found, but they do in fact exist. He goes on, we must eliminate the view that designates that it's not necessary for us to look for this. Requirements strive to find them must be correct and thorough. So certainly as of July 1978, we submit that um, this, uh, this notation is relevant to showing that um, Vietnamese in Cambodia, away from uh, the, um, the border dispute, uh, were, were sort of... In, People were instructed to find them, seek them out, and to uh, target them as uh, Vietnamese civilians, which would include them. And then I'd go to the 17th of May 1978 at E3863. This is a report from Ross Nim to Office 870, and it describes the, uh, the, uh, the Thai border situation, food shortages, etc. And then he raises the question about mixed marriages, and this is at English 0032 and French 006 
Generally speaking, these groups are scared of the situation and worried about their fate. There is not yet any sign of opposing activity. If any of them make some suspicious, suspicious activities, we will decide not to take them out. I know it's difficult to do that. The important thing is that we must be able to grasp them continuously. If they show any suspicions, we must be able to master them straight away. And then he says, that is my brief report. And this assists in showing that um, Vietnamese um, civilians were um, certainly uh, the subject and the target of um, discrimination um, and uh, consequently uh, help prove the policy of the targeting of the Vietnamese. Your Honour, I'd now like to turn to the report on 4th of August 1978, it's E3 slash 1094, and this is a monthly report from the West Zone, and it states at English 0031-5374-75, Khmer 0014-3604, and then French 0059-3530. And I quote, it's about the screening of the UN elements, CIA agents, and not the good elements. One, smashed 100 ethnic UNs, including small and big adults and children and smashed 60 persons who had been from the ranking group as well as the CIA. And then it goes on, there must be a measure for three UN combatants. We would submit, Your Honours, this is clear evidence of policy to kill um, Vietnamese combatants and civilians. I now just turn to the 2nd of January 1979, and this is E3-8404, and this is a statement of the government of Democratic Cambodia. And it's in English 0041-9728, and French 0001-7542. I quote, however, the just struggle of the Kampuchean nation and people defend them to defend their independence, sovereignty and territory integrity of the country and to defend the principles of non-alignment, peace and stability in the Southeast Asia, in Asia and in the world will surely win finally, final victory over Vietnam. The Soviet international expansionists and the and the Warsaw Pact, which are arch criminals. Because our struggle is just, because we carry out to protect the people's war, because the whole Kampuchea people are against Vietnam, which is our hereditary enemy, because we have more and more friends far or near who give us aid and support of all kinds, and we submit this supports the uh, issue that uh, Vietnamese were targeted because of race uh, rather than um, simply because they were, some of them were combatants. Your Honours, I'd now like to turn to briefly two of the expert reports. And the report of the 3rd of June 2010 of Elizabeth Doe, this is E3 4524. This is a study on the treatment of the Vietnamese minority in democratic Kampuchea from a comparative perspective. 
This woman is from Stanford University. And the aim of the study was to compare the treatment of ethnic Khmer and ethnic Vietnamese during the Khmer Rouge period. And she compares the treatment of the Khmers and the Vietnamese in six areas, verbal abuse, forced uniformity, material deprivation, expulsion, re-education and detainment, and disappearance and extermination. The study was done over two and a half years uh, with field research for some part of that time in Cambodia. The sources she used uh, were CPK documents, but largely a review of leading scholars and 48 interviews with Khmer, yes, Vietnamese and Chinese survivors from across the eastern zone of Democratic Kampuchea. So it's focused on the eastern zone. And she states that most of her informants were from Prey Veng and others were from Sphay Reng, Kampong and Kandal province. I would ask your honours uh, to, to look at that report, but in particular I would like to uh, refer your honours to the section uh, relating to um, the treatment of the ethnic Vietnamese to that of the ethnic Khmer in relation to disappearance and extermination during the DK period. At 0085488565989 she states Informants generally referred to 1977 or the middle of the KR period as the turning point in the Khmer Rouge treatment of the Vietnamese in the Eastern Zone. Prior to this year, the Vietnamese had been treated sim similarly to other people. However, according to informants, starting around 1976 and 1977, the Khmer Rouge began collecting the Vietnamese in their villages. Informants said that when Khmer Rouge cadres took the Vietnamese away, they used a variety of different excuses such as re-education, relocation, work and arrest. People were generally transported from the village by horse cart and never returned. Informants who, in who attested to the disappearance of Vietnamese people in their villages said that by the end of 1977 or 1978, most, if not all, of the Vietnamese had disappeared. Although a few Vietnamese survived, did survive the Khmer Rouge period. They represent the exception and not the rule. In fact, the overwhelming majority of informants expressed the personal opinion that if Khmer Rouge knew someone was Vietnamese, he or she would disappear or be killed without question. Of the 27 informants whom I asked whether it was dangerous to be Vietnamese during the Khmer Rouge period, 92% responded yes. When I asked a few ethnic Vietnamese how they survived, they responded in a variety of ways. They successfully hid their ethnic identity from the Khmer Rouge in their village, comma, they were protected by their local village chief or Khmer Rouge leader, or, and in one case, an informant said that the Khmer Rouge did not care that he was Vietnamese because he was a base person and a good worker. It appears that the Khmer Rouge in the Eastern Zone practice execution and disappearance against both Khmer new people and Vietnamese. People, with significant death tolls and some survivors on both sides. Although Khmer new people and Vietnamese people were both extremely vulnerable to extermination by the Khmer Rouge, there were some aspects of the Vietnamese experience that differed from the Khmer experience. Firstly, informants from Pocham Dam noted a pattern in how their local Khmer Rouge collected Vietnamese families, all of which consisted of Khmer and Vietnamese spouses. 
Informers said they observed the Khmer Rouge collecting the mother and children of a family if the mother was Vietnamese, but only the father of the family if the father was Vietnamese. Informants observed this pattern in the Khmer Rouge collection of all four Vietnamese families in Pocham Dam and said that Khmer Rouge cadres did not make such a distinction when they collected other people from the village. Informants from other villages, however, said that the Khmer Rouge in their village collected only the Vietnamese parent and not his or her children. And still other informants said the Khmer Rouge cadres collected the entire family if they found out that even one member was Vietnamese. All of these patterns were observed by informants and never publicly announced as a policy of the Khmer Rouge. The pattern observed in Pocham Dan village, though, it raises a possible distinction between the Khmer and Vietnamese experience requires more investigation. There is more evidence of difference in the Vietnamese and Khmer people's experiences in terms of each ethnic group's ability to evade Khmer Rouge extermination. The Vietnamese in Democratic Kampuchea had few personal, personal means to evade execution. As was discussed in the forced uniformity section, some ethnic Vietnamese possessed obvious physical differences from ethnic Khmer people, such as lighter skin and different accents when speaking Khmer. Such physical conditions were more difficult to hide than something intangible, such as the new people's class status or previous employment. Vietnamese's people's ethnic difference thus made it more likely they would be identified by the Khmer Rouge and more easily exterminated. The degree to which the Khmer Rouge sought to eliminate the Vietnamese also differed from its campaign against new people. The Khmer Rouge public announced was displaying a willingness to kill fellow Khmer associated with Vietnam reveals the determination of the Khmer Rouge to eliminate any remote traces of the Vietnamese in their country. Informants also asserted that if the Khmer Rouge found out someone was Vietnamese, he or she would surely be killed. These examples illustrate how ethnic Khmer remained in Cambodia suffered more of an immediate threat to their livelihood because the policies enacted towards them did not tolerate even their mere physical presence. Daim elaborates on this point by writing that the regime did not give ethnic Vietnamese the option to relinquish their ethnic identity as a mechanism for survival. One Khmer Rouge stated if a person was ethnic Vietnamese, it was certain they wouldn't survive. Once they were discovered, that was it. Lastly, Khmer Rouge extermination practices exacted different impacts on the Khmer and Vietnamese population. Although a few Vietnamese survived, the overwhelming majority of the population, the remaining Vietnamese, died by the end of the Khmer Rouge period. So much so that some scholars even proposed that the entire population was annihilated. Although Khmer and new people suffered extremely high numbers of death, the extermination of those groups did not have the same proportional impact on their populations. Matt writes about how the organised nature of the Khmer Rouge extermination campaign against the Vietnamese and the resulting death toll among the population differentiates, differentiates the Vietnamese case. And I quote, compared to other groups, the ethnic Vietnamese population was completely exterminated. It is estimated that 100% of the country's remaining ethnic Vietnamese population or 10,000 
while the DK also initiated irredentist the campaigns against Thailand and Laos. This aggression against Vietnam was the most fervent. Numerous documents and decrees on Khmer Vietnamese relations illustrate DK's targeted and warped For these reasons, the Vietnamese and Khmer populations face different treatment in terms of extermination and Your Honours, I further turn to um, the author's conclusion at English uh, 0054 Sorry, 0075, one zero one to two four. She states, differences in the, the forced uni uniformity and expulsion categories were clear. The Vietnamese were forced to shed their language and claim to their ethnic identity, which the new people, being from predominantly Khmer, did not. The Khmer Rouge also carried out official campaigns to remove the Vietnamese from democratic countries, which it did not do to Khmer or new people. The nature of the extermination campaigns against the two groups also differed, as well as the impact extermination had on each group's greater population. In these episodes of disparate treatment, both ethnic and political factors were at play. As soon as the Khmer Rouge took power, it publicly announced that there was to be only a Khmer race and began in regimes pursuit for an ethnic and pure democratic leadership. Most informants remembered hearing Khmer Rouge leaders in the village meetings and everyday conversation repeatedly called the Vietnamese historical enemy and referred to Vietnam's past exploitation and abuse of Khmer people, such as the Tae-ong incident. The performance also attested to the Khmer Rouge almost exclusive use of the word yuan to refer to the Vietnamese people. Although the word may not have originated as hate speech, the way in which it was used during the Khmer Rouge period as evidence in the black paper loaded the term with at least a disrespectful tone towards the Vietnamese, which is very likely known to those who employed the term. Such rhetoric provides evidence of the fact that the Khmer Rouge was quite fixated on promoting ethnic cleansing and invoking ethnic cleansing. This explains the regime's policies and practices of banning the Vietnamese language and culture and even physically removing Vietnamese people from the country. Ethnic identity also played a role in the Khmer Rouge's extermination of the Vietnamese, with some Khmer Rouge carrying out massacres of the whole Vietnamese communities without any signs of provocation or from race. It appears that the regime was also influenced by political facts, such as the antagonism of the VWP and the border war, which resulted from the breakdown of political relationships. We see evidence of such political motivations, particularly in the regime's expulsion and extermination policies. In the context, the regional war, the security became a top priority for the DK government. In the black paper, the Khmer Rouge rationalized this purge of the Vietnamese in the country by writing that, quote, Vietnam 
ពីនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះនេះន
English zero zero six seven six five zero. Yeah, we can say English zero zero six five zero. Yeah, we can say English zero zero six five zero. Yeah, we can say English zero zero six five zero. Yeah, we can say English zero zero six five zero. Yeah, we can say Thank you, Mr. President. Um, President, I apologise. So, so English, English 0067 8650, and French 0063 In that, from that section down, there's a approximately a two-page section where Ben Kiernan um, brings his research together with Vietnamese. He states that 150,000 Vietnamese and left Cambodia the CPK had expelled them by September 1975. And then, in particular, but he then goes through talking about the period in mid-1976 and then discusses the period 1977 in the West Zone, and 1977 in the coastal regions, and also 1977 in the East and the North Zone. Certainly from his evidence that he footnotes in relation to um, authors' interviews, with um, uh, CPK Nippon, cadre, others, uh, uh, other reports, it's um, his conclusion that there was a, a systematic campaign against the Vietnamese uh, that was countrywide, not just uh, in the East Zone, not just in uh, uh, Sphairing or Prairie, but across the country, um, and particularly solidified in uh, 1977. Just um, I refer your honours to one last document. This is, um, this is from Nguyen Chia's book, uh, Behind the Killing Fields. It's E3 slash 4202. Uh, um, uh, uh, by Ted Sumpat, uh, uh, the autobiography of, of Nguyen Chia. Trong ear and son son seven five two zero 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 and he states, I got my leg last some dots wrong. No chip on the yata. We did not kill the internal traitors. Young, um, and some lap and neck, but no clong a two part of our young person. I person German to take command child, come and the more dangerous to the past. We didn't kill the from the policy documents Chen emanating Pee, from Aikasa, Gold, uh, Office 870, the speeches at the uh, anniversary uh, meetings, the revolutionary uh, flags, uh, um, they all paint together a picture uh, that Vietnamese, uh, not only combatants, but civilians, 
ជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជាជ